So, yeah, for Marquis, for you, what was the thought process in definitely ma in making Avery the front returner? How, how did he win that battle in your eyes? You know, it goes with uh, Avery, you know, he did his part. It comes, there's a lot of variables, whether it comes to decision making, the calmness and poise as a returner. Um, you could have those attributes of being break tackle ability, speed, elusiveness, but the main thing is getting the ball in your hands and making the right decisions when the fair catch, when the not fair catch, when to, you know, get away from the football, when not to catch it, those things. A lot of those things came into play and his overall football IQ and his knowledge of the game. So, and, and I love the mindset that he has too. And with Cordarrelle, do you envision using him as a kick returner? I know he said, you know, that's what he's going to do as long as he's in the league. But do you envision him using him as a kick returner? Or is his role on the offense going to maybe change that in some ways? I mean, we'll see. It, it varies. You know, we have a good group of guys in our special teams room that could return the ball, block, you know. So it's just mismatching those pieces. And it's a collaborative effort, whether it's offense to special teams or special teams to offense. You know, those opportunities for CP, Avery, whoever's back there, get them opportunity to one, put our offense in great field position, one, by making the right decision. And once they get the ball in their hand, um, being able to, you know, put us in position to have our offense either put up points or at least our offense has the ball in the next possession with good field position. And the last question I've got is, uh, is that rotating sixth captain, is that your, like, is that a special, going to be reserved for like a special teams type role because a lot of teams use that or is that? I mean, it's, it's open for whatever. It's, you know, throughout the week, you know, with the decision from the head man, I'll kind of be up to him, but it's a collaborative, you know, effort and, you know, conversation on, you know, who's having a week based on, like, you know, practice, preparation, those things. So it could vary week to week on that captain position. But that will be more of a question for the head man. I want to go back to what you said about Avery. When you're talking about that calmness mm -hmm. that, that you saw from him, when was the first time that you saw that from him? Was it something that he came into camp with right away, or was it something that developed? You know, that's something that he put on film. And that helped base our decision on having, you know, a player of his stature, you know, a player like himself, like Avery, coming in the building and be a part of this uh, roster. And then that you see it at practice, and it starts with his work ethic. You know, he's one of the first guys out there on the practice field kept getting all those extra reps in. And you only get better with reps, whether it's offense, defense, or special teams. Now, special teams is limited amount of reps, so you try to create those reps, whether it's pre-practice on the jug machines, catching balls off the punter foot, things in that nature. Yeah, Coach, with you uh, and Coach Clay being first-time coordinators, what are you expecting from his units as he uh, gets started up there in San Francisco, too? Yes, I have a lot of respect for Coach Clay. You know, I coached against him, I think his first year was 16. Uh, or one, my first year was 16, I coached against him. And, you know, we stayed in contact. Congrats to him and his new position with the Eagles. Uh, watching his team on, on uh, you know, watching the video, you know, you can see those guys, they play with a lot of effort. He plays a, guy, a lot of guys at different positions. You know, their returning group, they have a lot of different returners, a lot of different guys that carry the ball in their hand. But they play discipline and sound football, and that's what you want in a special teams unit. So we look forward to the challenge. I'm excited for him, and it should be a you know, great opportunity for both of us. Marquise, this is my first time having a chance to meet you. My name is Tanitra Petit. Nice from to meet you. Game. Nice to meet you as well, and congratulations, of course. But going into these final few days, you know, one of the challenges that the Falcons faced last year was just a lot of fair catches, a lot of fair catches. So mm -hmm. what's kind of been your philosophy, especially in these last few days, of someone like an Avery Williams, who's a rookie, and really getting them to understand how important it is not to always take that fair catch and kind of put the offense in position, in good field position? Yeah. The number one thing is, is just, you know, all 11 guys playing together. Now, if we have to fair catch a ball because of the coverage aspect of it and not catching the ball in traffic and not making a play disastrous, then we have to make the fair catch. The biggest thing going into this week, going against the punter that we're going against where he could put the ball over the place, is having urgency to the football, to get underneath the football, and then make the right decision. Um, the other 10 guys on the field, we have to do our job when it comes to punt return with you know eliminating those guys getting downfield to give our punt return or whoever that may be a chance to operate. And if we're not giving him the chance, then he has to make sure that we secure the football for our offense on the next play. So that's what comes to play. Now, last year's last year, you know, with, with that team, and, and that's what our, the team I was with last year, too, as well, with Jamal Agnew. We had to just put ourselves in a position, one, to give our returner a chance to do, do their job. So all 11 guys are doing their job at the same time. And then you kind of look at it as well, and it's kind of a two-parter because 
when it comes to the Eagles and Falcons, those games the last few seasons have been very, very close. Mm -hmm. And then last year, Falcons with a lot of success on onside kicks. So has there been some attention kind of paid to, to that this week as well, as you're putting in front of game plan? Uh, it's more so just paying attention to the personnel and the schemes that we're going against and just making sure that we're um, our guys have been doing a great job in the classroom on the field, making sure we're prepared, you know, making sure we're going over uh, various situations. And whatever situation pops up, we can answer the question, are we prepared for that situation before it presents itself? And then when it comes to that, no matter what the situation is, whether it's a fourth down play, an onside kick, a uh, hands team, whatever the case may be, we got to play with our technique and we got to be in the present. So that's what we look for, forward to come Sunday is being in the present, making sure that we're executing at a high level when it comes to our attention to detail and our technique. You mentioned Jamal. And do you see comparisons between Avery and Jamal, even kind of their paths and, and how they're used and even their so are there Are there things there that you see? That I, no, I try not to compare players. You know, Avery has his own attributes and his own work that, and he's his own person. Um, and, you know, he hasn't even played a, a season, a first NFL game yet. So, I mean, down the line, we'll see where that goes. I'm very excited, you know, for Avery and his opportunity to go out there and, you know, put his best foot forward for the team, whether it's in the coverage units, in the return game, blocking, whatever the case may be defensively, whatever his, his role is. So um, I'm not really into comparisons when it comes to that, but I'm excited for him. That you see in him that you saw in Jamal? Um, there's there's a couple. You know, not, you could say that with any returner, with any returner in the league, you know, whether it's catch mechanics, you know, decision making, those things. But, you know, Avery's been doing a great job of working, you know, his tail off to get himself ready for this opportunity. I, I, you talked last week a little bit about quarter and mm -hmm. when you guys were taking because you had Avery taking the ball out of the end zone. How much agency does Corderell have to make those own decisions versus metrics and rules that you guys have set up for if it's five, six, seven yards deep? You know, it's a case by case basis. That's a discussion that, you know, Coach Smith and myself and Cordell we have, you know, when that comes to those situations. So it's a case by case. So um, depending on the situation of the game, it depends on the type of defense we're going against, uh, you know, what we're doing offensively and, and those type of game plans. So it's a case by case situation. Coach, could you um, you tell the people of Atlanta why Corderell has been a four-time Pro Bowler and what to expect from him and his returns and so forth? You know, his work ethic. He, he goes out there, he works, and, you know, and his personality, who he is as a person, you know, and what he when he comes into the building, who he is, you know, people love playing with him. And it goes to say about his personality and his character and his work ethic. Um, when it comes to him as a returner, you, obviously the tape doesn't lie. He's dynamic with the ball in his hand. And it's a great opportunity for us, you know, and the guys in our room to go out there and, you know, go out there and execute, not only for him, but for our offense and for the Falcons. So with that being said, you know, it's a big, I'll say it's big for him just to see the love that the players have for him and how he works and goes about his business day in and day out. Because you can see the hard charger running, but yeah. he's got something special in his return. Yeah, he's just having the ball in his hand. I mean, I've, he has a number amount of returns. You know, his vision, you can't speak for it. It's hard to, you know, to duplicate and replicate how he carries the football in his hand. So he does have great vision. Um, he still has a lot of work. You know, you could ask, talk to him. He's still working on his craft day in and day out, which is awesome to be around when you're dealing with a player of that caliber. What, what do you remember about your experience in the Bill Walsh coaching at the University Fellowship? How did that help you with the learner? You know, um, you know, to this day, there's a lot of different tools that I use from that Bill Walsh Fellowship program. It was a great opportunity to, one, get exposed to the NFL, you know, culture and operation and logistics of the NFL and helping me become more organized as a, as a coach and as a mentor and a teacher. Also, too, you know, it allowed me to, you know, really focus and get dialed in on the X's and O's. You know, co coaching college football was amazing, great opportunity, and it allowed me to get to the spot with the fellowship program, allowed me to get NFL experience without being an NFL coach. So, no, go ahead. Do you think you would have gotten to the NFL without that program? I, I couldn't tell you that, but I could tell you if it wasn't for the program, I wouldn't be in this position right now. The exposure I, I gained working with, you know, Mark Tressman, Joe D. Camillus, uh, Mel Tucker, uh, uh, we go with uh, Ro Robert Prince. He's now with the Texans. Jim Caldwell, you know, Jim Caldwell helped me out a lot when it came to the.
Bill Walsh Fellowship Program, and he really helped me with the tools to further, you know, advance myself and help others also too, other players throughout my career. And both of you were in that class together. Do you all still connect? Yes. Family? Yes, we still connect. You know, those are the network that you build, you gain from that program is priceless, and it was a grateful opportunity. I'm, I'm forever grateful for the NFL and the Bill Walsh Fellowship Program for that opportunity. Um, being a Division II football player, a Division II and FCS coach um, with the goals that, you know, one day, like at that time, the coach at the FBS, but I went straight to the NFL. And those um, relationships that I have with former NFL coaches, current NFL coaches, and then fellowship uh, members that I was with, um, I still stay in contact with everybody. You guys good? All right. Thanks, George. Thank you.